wanting answers for the police involved shooting last night. We have seen the narrative that police have put into the newspaper, but we also have the voices of the community. We have witnesses that have come forward that have stated that it appeared to the community that this was a mental health crisis. And so our demand today is that the video cameras of what happened is released to the public immediately unredacted. We are not here to make assumptions this morning, but we know that we are in a time of history where we cannot afford to withhold the truth for any lingering time at all. We are in a time in history that we need transparency immediately. So we are asking the chief of police for St. Paul and the mayor, Melvin Carter, right. to move expeditiously as the leaders in this city and to release the body camera footage that would provide the community with transparency right away. We deserve that. We need that. Our community is in pain. We can no longer allow time to go by where we don't have answers. We are not accusing anybody of anything. But the only way, the only way to be able to move forward as a community is to get the truth right now. That's right. So now call forward the founder of Communities United Against Police Brutality, Michelle Grove. provide a very good avenue for the police department to be transparent. There are th two statutes that we have in this regard. There uh, is 13.82 uh, subdivision, uh, subdivision 2 that there is a certain set of data for all police encounters with people that deprive them of their liberties. For a broad set of data that is to be Available immediately to the public at all times from the originating agency. And that's literally the language of the law. Public at all times in the originating agency. And that includes things like the individual's name, the law enforcement officer's names, what uh, weapons were used, if any, what things happened during the incident. And we are going to be delivering a letter this morning to demand that that data be released immediately. It is absolutely essential that law enforcement be transparent. It's absolutely essential. In addition to that data, which is governed under uh, Minnesota Statute 13.82 Subdivision 2, under Minnesota Statute 13.825, there is a broad, Subdivision 5 specifically, there is a, a broad access to the public of body worn camera footage. They have to release the footage within 14 days, but they are free to release it much sooner, and we are demanding that they release it much sooner. There is no reason or excuse to fail in the mission of transparency. They need to be open. They need to tell us what happened. We have been told by witnesses that the gentleman was walking away from police and was walking on the light rail track. In fact, there are witnesses um, who posted video from their apartments who saw the entire incident. And basically, they said he was walking away from the police. We want to know if that's true or not. We want to know why this happened. We still know that St. Paul is the deadliest police department in this state. There's no question about that. And thus, we cannot, and we also do know that St. Paul has a history of lying about what happens in these incidents. They lied about uh, the Marcus Golden case. They lied about other cases, Jacob Smith and the others. And we are not going to just be okay with waiting for some 
investigation with no end in sight and waiting for them to tell us their version of things without any reality about what actually happened. It is on the police to be transparent to the community at this point because they haven't been in the past. And so we make the demands that they release all of the 13.82 subdivision 2 data immediately and further that they release the body camera footages and any squad camera footages unadapted. I just want to reiterate what was just said. Oh, my name is Karen Cruz. I'm with Black Lives Matter. I just want to reiterate the importance of releasing this video to the public's interest. A lot of people are here, right lifetime residents from St. Paul, who've seen what happened, who've seen the person walking away, who seen um, the shooting, and um, they're traumatized about what's happening in the neighborhood, and they want to get down to, to why this happened. Uh, so, again, we want this body camera footage released immediately and expeditiously. And uh, we just want to talk to law enforcement in the state of Minnesota and just ask, not ask, but demand that some black people get treated the same way that white people get treated in the state of Minnesota. And we know all police officers go through the same training and all police officers should have the same response. Uh, a white man killed, a white man shot a black man in St. Paul, he was not arrested for five days. No, that's Minneapolis. I mean in Minneapolis, and he was not arrested for five days. But here, uh, a man was threatening to kill himself and he was killed by police. So, um, just the criminal justice system in the state of Minnesota is not here, especially as it pertains to black lives. Thank you. We will now call forward Chantel Adam with Black Lives Matter. Thank you. What's up? I'm Chantal Allen with Black Lives Matter from the Cities. I'm extremely disappointed with um, what's happening here in St. Paul. This has been the deadliest police force in the state of Minnesota. Right. The state of Minnesota where we had a worldwide uprising because of the police unaccountability that we had going on in our state. This city has neglected to do any sort of police reform. Just in right. this year, we've had two people murdered that we're having mental health crises. We don't have a mental health response team, and when they do respond, they allow the police to go in first. That's their method. That's going to, that's, that in itself is going to cause a lot of murders, right? Because right. the whole purpose of a mental health response team is to de-escalate the mental health crisis. Right. If somebody is suicidal, they more than likely have a weapon to unalive themselves. When the police see that weapon, they immediately shoot. We have to have a mental health crisis response team. Overall, the city is not doing absolutely anything to change the level of murders that we have in the city, the harassment that we have in the city, uh, over policing that we deal with in the city. Just in this last month, our police department has arrested over 40 people for being without homes and addicted to that right in our city, right around the university. I've been doing consistent outreach with folks who are struggling in those areas, and the police and the city hasn't done anything to right. try to alleviate the problems. They wait until we get into this dumb, tough situation where folks are living in that, right, and they become suicidal, then they come and murder them. Right. That is not policing. Nope. That is not even community safety at all. How are we doing anything? How are we stepping up to be the leaders as the capital city of the state? How is the state stepping up to be the leaders in the United States? We had a international uprising about how black people were treated by the police departments in this state. Right. Nothing is changing. That's what's frustrating us. We're continuing to watch our community members just be murdered because they're going through crisis situations. We're continuing to watch our community members be harassed and arrested because they're in crisis situations. When is this gonna change? When is this gonna change? And that's the, that's the thing that's really blowing me is because like, we've been doing this for like, what is this, 2024? Right. These same people have been standing up here for 10 years, asking for change. 
And the city of St. Paul has not done nothing. In fact, we keep increasing the police budget. Mm -hmm. Talk right. about it. Talk about it. In fact, we hired people that are police officers to oversee the Department of Community Safety, Talk which is the it. alternative policing program. Mm -hmm. In fact, in order to try and alleviate some of the issues that are happening on the light rail, we just sweep down and arrest all those people costing taxpayers right. over a half a million dollars. This is old school police style. This is 1990s police style. This is how we rolled in the early 2000s. This is why our murder numbers were exacerbated as high as they were to cause this uprising. Mm -hmm. If we don't do anything different, we're going to continue to watch the same thing happen that happened in 2022. Say that. Say it. I want something different for my city. Come on. I know that these people want something for their city. Yes. That's why they continue to show up and we continue to organize and work hard at changing policies on a state, city, and county level right. so that we can protect our communities. The question is, when are the people that are elected to these positions going to work to keep our city safe? Oh, Not just safe from what they see as a problem, but safe from what we all see as a problem, right. which is over-militarized police. I'm Chantel with Black Lives Matter Twin Cities. I'm tired. Come on. Yeah. I'm over it. I want our officials to be just as damn tired. Everything that you have heard my comrades say. We are tired. We are tired of the frames. We are tired of the um, not receiving the information. Um, it has been four years since um, George Floyd uprising has happened. We have had the DOJ come in here um, and find findings that um, we have a corrupt state. And still, we have people getting shot down dead in the street. We are days away from an election um, and our governor is on the VP ticket. Before he leaves house, he needs to clean house and ensure that our loved ones are going to continue to be shot down dead in the street and also sent to prison for crimes that evidence show that he didn't commit. We're not here to blame anyone. We're here to find out the truth. We want the information, and we want to also send prayers, love, and respect to the person who was involved, the victim who was shot by the police. Thank you guys so much. I'm Arlena Hayes, Minnesota Road Police Victim Judicial Reform. In addition to uh, community leaders, we also have families that have shown up, impacted families that have lost loved ones at the hands of law enforcement here in Minnesota. So we will call forward the mother of Kobe Heisler, Amity Demi. Kobe Heisler, who was killed by Brooklyn Center Police. Thank you. Hey everyone, I'm Amity Demi. Kobe Heisler was murdered by the Brooklyn Center Police during a mental health crisis. I'm here to tell you that I don't care if a person has a weapon in their hand, if a person has suicidal ideations, why are you going to go finish the job for them? Wouldn't your job be to try to stop them from killing themselves? Yes. Don't just go right. help them and stop saying the word suicide. Say it, that this is a color matter, and most people have somebody who has a mental health issue in their life. All y'all standing up right here, your children, probably good if the police come and respond. Not so, not so sure about your child, sir. All right. We are here, though. We don't know 100% what happened. That's kind of what they like to do: is leave us in, leave us in the clouds, not knowing what's going on. We're simply here today to ask for the body-worn cameras. Body-worn cameras have been an issue in most of our cases. I mean, shoot, it took for George Floyd getting murdered over a year later, and I'm sorry to go to the new you guys, uh, to, to finally get 
our videos, and keep in mind, you have a three-year statute of limitation to do anything, how are you supposed to get anything done? Can you imagine going into work and being like, you got to get eight hours of work done, but you only have two-thirds of that time to do it? Good luck, you know? So, we're here, and we will probably be back out after we find out what happened, but at this point, we need to see the body worn cameras, and even though they have that, we did try to pass, uh, what was it, a three-day turnaround? Governor Waltz ended up doing some executive something or another, um, which ended up at 14 days. But I mean, I just, I just implore you to imagine if it was you. Would you want to wait 14 days to find out what happened to your loved one? I think not. I don't even think you want to wait 24 hours. And I would also just like to know that they have cited reasons why they can't um, release it early. But uh, after having, over the last few years, after having forced them to release them early, guess what? Nothing's happened. Cities have burned, whatever. Give us the information. It's your freaking job. Okay, who you got? One or two more speakers before we conclude, um, before we need to drop information off at the mayor's office. Um, we will have Emma Peterson. And at the city clerk's office as well, we will have uh, Emma Peterson. Investigation. I just want to echo the calls today for the release of the body worn camera footage as well as all of the public data, including the names of the officers that were involved in this incident. Under Minnesota law, those names are public immediately and at all times. Right. To speak about this incident, we do not know much yet, and that's why we're asking for the release of the data, but we do know a lot about police violence in the state of Minnesota as, as well as across the country. Native people are killed at the highest rates, and that black folks are shortly followed behind them and are killed at disproportionate rates across the country, and those disparities are even heightened here in Minnesota. It's been said that St. Paul Police Department is one of the most deadly police departments um, in the state of Minnesota. That continues to be true to this day. Um, they just killed a uh, Native woman, Pepsi, earlier uh, this year, um, and they killed many others. So we just echo uh, calls here. One thing I want to point out is that last year, the most people in our the past decade were killed by law enforcement across the United States. And we are on a record to break that record this year in 2024. And uh, another study just came out recently that of people killed by strangers, one third of those are killed by police. Yet, Crime rates are dropping across the country, crime rates are dropping in Minneapolis right. and in St. Paul, and the number of arrests across the day now are also on the decline. Mm -hmm. So I would like somebody in law enforcement to account for why their officers are continuing to kill people at record rates. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, we will have our last speaker, who is the mother of Brandon Keys, who was killed, Lisa Keys. Um, Brandon was killed by the St. Paul Police Department this past year. Thank you. Hello, it's the sheer state of my name is Lisa Keys. He was murdered on December 7, 2023, by Officer Michael Tashida of the St. Paul Police Department. I put my heart beating out of my chest right now. I know what it's like what happens when they put your loved ones into an ambulance and take them away so they can get the story and the words of the We demand accountability now. We want to know, we want to see the footage. We want you to follow the same laws that you hold us accountable to and that our loved ones are dying because of. My son didn't deserve to die that day. He was experiencing a mental health crisis. And this is too close to home for me. I'm praying for the family. All praise to the Most High and respect to the ancestors. We will not go away, we will not shut up, we will not stop talking about this, we will not stop asking for others to join and stand with us. There should be more people here today. This is an outrage. There should be more people supporting that man and we have to support this woman. Enough is enough. Mayor, speak, speak to what is happening in your city. 
We hold you accountable. You never called me to talk about what happened to my son. I'm praying for this family. Thank you. Too. I heard someone mention like homeless, someone mentioned young men. We just don't know anything about this person. And I, I didn't know if anyone can help give us any sort of idea of, of who this was, if it was a young man, if it was an old man, if it was, you know, not going to make a difference. It's just trying to figure out how to do that about this person. About life threatening, life threatening. The last report that we heard or seen is that he had life threatening. Yep. Injury, so yep. life threatening is not good at all in any situation. Um, the reason why we're talking about homeless is because there's a, a big problem with mental health and homelessness and uh, fentanyl issues along the life road, and we don't think the way to solve that is killing. A witness last night, a witness last night said that who was there close to where it happened. Um, and, you know, was actually on the ground hearing this stuff, said that the gentleman had broken up with their girlfriend or something on that order, or had a fight with their girlfriend or whatever, and um, basically essentially threatened to kill themselves um, and stood on a light rail track. But we, again, don't have any not direct knowledge of that. It's, this is from what a witness believes she saw. But that can all be cleared up easily if the police would simply be transparent. Thank you. you said that they give you a range of water in 14 days. What are some of the reasons? Well, in other cases. In other cases. What are, what are, they, what are they told? You know, in other cases, they always say, we need time to do our investigation and this and that. I personally think they need time to manufacture their story. To manufacture their lies. That's right. To manufacture their cover. Um, we find out a lot of times later that things are not what they say here. And one of the things that we know, and this is not you know, a stain on you folks, but one of the things we know is that uh, memories are short. 
They hear a, a, a version of an incident. The official is a version by the police. And when it turns out that that version is not true, then try getting any kind of you know recognition by the public that in fact that wasn't the situation. Once, once something is embedded in people's memories, it's hard to change that. And we have seen that, for example, in the case of the McKinney family, in which the police chief alleged that they were doing everything they could and all this stuff, and now we find out that for a year this family attempted to get help. And the Minneapolis police virtually ignored their needs and allowed them to get into a situation in which they were, uh, you know, then Mr. Uh, Davis Maturi was then shot in the neck in his room. Michelle, the witnesses in this case, are those people, anyone here directly or I'm sorry, I'm having trouble hearing. I'm sorry, that information from witnesses that you mentioned, is that from, has anyone here talked to witnesses or where? Yes, okay. yes, witnesses came to um, some of us last night. Have you heard from? Tatira's to share about that Yeah, um, we have had witnesses that have come forward um, and basically stated that they didn't feel from what they witnessed that this individual who was shot, that the words were, you didn't have to shoot him. That's what was said by many community members after the shooting happened. That's all that we can give thus far. Have you heard from And I will say this, I will add this. Some witnesses have said, you know, the police have to say that they use um, you know, non-lethal weaponry or less lethal weaponry, like tasers and so forth. Um, and multiple witnesses have said that that is not so. That they basically, you know, he was walking away, they didn't tell him to drop the weapon or anything, and they just shot him. And he was walking away, they shot him in the back. So we, but we, yeah, we don't know. The police could be transparent, they can solve this problem by simply showing us what happened, not telling us, showing us. Have you heard from any family members or friends of the person who was shot? Well, no, we haven't heard anything from families um, because what's happening at this point is that uh, they're not releasing the name of the person that was shot. Uh, this has happened multiple times with the last few shootings at the hands of the St. Paul Police Department that they're not releasing the names right away. So with that, we have no idea who the person is and it's hard to believe that this isn't happening on purpose. It's hard to believe that the video is not being released right away. So if you want us to trust you, if you want, if you want us to believe what you're saying, then you have to move in a way that shows us that you're trying to be honest with the community. Um, I want any of my other colleagues besides me, Michelle, to answer questions if you guys have questions. Someone mentioned there being at least some sort of video maybe taken by people yes. who were nearby. Can you describe what that video shows, um, what you see in that video? So the lady is from, is on top of a building or her apartment mm -hmm. and is showing the um, train tracks or something. You don't see them moving, some moving over. <laughs> Didn't hear about, you can hear about seven shots. <laughs> So, and then you can hear her say, oh my God, they just killed the shots in my So you see the, the shooting from police happen in that video? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it's hard to see exactly what's happening, but that is the incident of, of, of the shooting. Also, oh, I'm sorry, also, uh, when it came to the police arriving on the scene, do you all know how long it took for the police to interact with this individual and discharge the apartment. Um, I, I don't. I just know a lifetime community member um, from St. Paul said she seen him walking away and that um, he, 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 he got shot. So he had a gun to his head and he was threatening to kill himself. And so that's why we're saying that there needs to be mental health um, resources for people who are having suffering from mental health issues, drug issues, drug issues. So we don't know this is a mental health thing? Um, we, don't know, we don't know yet uh, what it is at all, but we just know that community members who see it say that they didn't have to shoot. 
talking about body cameras, but it's being released right away. Are you looking for the day out, the hours after, the hours? Like today. <laughs>